At Blotch Wireless and Samsung introduce the Z Flip 3. The Z Flip 3 is an actual flip phone that, when open, reveals a stunning 6.7 inch touchscreen for the best of both worlds. To find out more, visit AppalachianWireless.com. We are you. We are Appalachian Wireless. The case of the United States versus Eugene Sisko III continued in downtown Pottville on Monday morning. Following closing arguments from each side, the jury has officially begun deliberations as we now stand by and await their verdict. With their closing statements, the differences between the two narratives being presented by each side was clear. Prosecutors on behalf of the U.S. government have charged Cisco with two counts, one for wire fraud and a second for health care fraud. They maintain that the central issue of this case is the defendant's culpability for having allegedly scammed patients out of money paid to him in the form of cash charges imposed for medically unnecessary urine tests, which Cisco himself, not his clinic doctors, had begun requiring for his patients. As events unfolded, prosecutors alleged that Cisco eventually stopped charging this additional cash fee after his clinics began losing patients due to them. To make up for this loss of illegal profits, prosecutors further alleged that Cisco then began requiring his patients to submit to weekly urine testing. Patients were no longer charged for these tests out of pocket, but the increase in the number of reimbursements now coming in from Medicaid allegedly resulted in even more illicit gains for the defendant. Cisco's defense team, on the other hand, spent the time during their closing arguments reminding the jury that being a successful businessman isn't a crime. The defense countered the arguments of prosecutors by stating that at no point was any patient forced or otherwise coerced into seeking treatment at the defendant's treatment centers. Furthermore, attorneys for Cisco also emphasized how there is no maximum amount of urine testing required for patients of addiction clinics, but there is a minimum amount of testing required. This fact would seem to indicate that it is up to the doctor's discretion as to how often patients should be tested, and the defendant did not act in the role of a provider for his clinics. Cisco's attorneys also reminded the jury that the defendant at one point had even contacted officials responsible for writing Medicaid laws to ensure that he was within compliance. Prosecutors also acknowledged this, although they claimed that the defendant misled Medicaid officials during this conversation. Cisco himself did not testify. Following this, the jury was escorted out of the courtroom at approximately 11.30 a.m. to begin their deliberations. For Mountaintop News, I'm Joshua Sloan.